coaching purposes. If you don't want this call to be recorded, please let us know. To improve our services and your experience with the NDIS, you may be asked to complete a confidential automated short survey after you finish speaking with one of our operators. This is a short survey and should take less than two minutes to complete. We may also contact you after this call at a later date to further discuss your experience today. For further information about either of these surveys, please ask the operator that you speak with today. The NDIS requests respectful communication during your call. All NDIA employees have the right not to be subjected to any abusive language, behavior, or abuse that includes threats of physical harm or violence religious, cultural or racial insults, or any other derogatory remarks. Such conduct may lead to termination of your call. Thank you for holding. Your call has been queued, and someone will be with you as soon as possible. Thank you for calling in the year. My name is Kulbeyev. How I can help you today? Oh, good um, afternoon. My name is Richard McLean. I missed your name, sorry. Yeah, Kulveev Richard. Kulveev. K-U-L-D-W-E-P. Pardon? K-U-L-D-W-E-P. My ah. name is Kulveev. Okay, thank you. Um, look, I was ringing for a couple of reasons today. One, um, I have a new plan. Um, two, I'm currently um squatting so i'm homeless and um uh basically i really urgently require the ndia to please acknowledge the medium term emergency accommodation um to my account or either to my landlord um as an emergency payment because to not do so will place me at great risk I want to know, please, if you can look at my plan. Yeah. If sure, I am, sure. if happy to assist you. Do you have the NDIS number, please? Um. Oh, look. To be honest, I haven't even been sent my plan yet, so I don't know. Um. I'll I'll look at plan partners. because uh, that's where my um plan is. They've apparently got a copy of the plan, but I don't. Um, you should also get as a participant there, uh, but uh, I'm happy if you do not have uh, uh, what you call a uh, uh, number. No, I've got it. Four four three zero nine three eight double five nine. Double five nine. Thank you. And may I please have your full name? Dr. Richard William McLean. Thank you, Richard. And may I please have your date of work? 8th of 4th, 73. Thank you. And your uh, listed address? 2 McCubbin Street, Footscray. And the postcode there, please? 3011. Thank you very much for confirming all those details. All right. Now, let me check that what you have. I look like you have just, uh, the plan has just been approved. Yes. Can I please confirm from you? If the NDIS or A will approve um, emergency medium term accommodation, because otherwise I will be at great risk and I am already um, at great risk. Yeah, sure. Let me check that one, please. Richard, may I please put you on hold for uh, maybe two to three minutes? Let me go to check the funding and discuss with you. I, I would prefer if um, you don't put me on hold because every time I ring up with this particular issue, um, I'm I'm cut off. So now I... I Just stay there then. Okay. Well, I, can, so I, I, maybe, can I... I may be a few, uh, few uh, minutes. I may be a quiet there. But I'm I, not gone. I'm just checking the funding. That's all right. Can I just interject there? I have already put an invoice through on the 11th of March, which was last Friday, for 
medium term accommodation. It is an emergency. It is reasonable and necessary. And um, uh, Plan Partners has come back and said the NDIS does not approve invoices for services that have not happened yet. Now, I don't know what that means. Um, there's another one um, for rent and it says um, with Plan Partners on 13th of March, there appears to be an issue with the NDIS plan. We'll check back with you shortly, but they never do. There's another one for rent. There appears to be an issue with the NDIS plan. All of these things are rendering me a vagrant. I have got 42 or so invoices that have not been paid by um, plan partners. Plan partners blame the NDIA that they've blanket banned me and the NDIA blame plan partners. Now I've written to the NDI minister, Reynolds, and I have explained in detail this situation and she has sent um, a pretty innocuous message back condoning my vagrancy and not intervening. So I don't know if something's um, hanging over your head or you're told to say a certain thing, but um, look, I just, I'm, I'm in desperate situation. I would love to find someone lower down on the ranks that can just simply tell me, am I able to claim medium term rent to save me from being homeless? Okay, so in the current plan there, Richard, there is no funding for uh, medium term accommodation. Okay, the funding is provided for help at your residence. Okay, and uh, your meal preparation also. But uh, not for uh, your medium term accommodation. Can you please send me evidence of that? That is in the copy of the plan. I can definitely send you a copy of the plan. Well, can you email me a copy of the plan right now, please? And I would like to say that in my recent NDIS meeting, it was discussed my homelessness and it wasn't brought up at all that I require ongoing supported accommodation. This is abhorrent and it's also abhorrent that I have an AAT case that is not valued by the people who interviewed me. Now I explained to the people who interviewed me, I can't remember her name, that she has to obey the Charter for Human Rights, which a govern government official is a signatory to and must act within. That includes having a suitable home medication and health care and equality before the law. What she has done is not give me supported accommodation. She's denied me um, any accommodation support and she knows too well that she's responsible for acting in a manner that's consistent with the human rights the government has signed into legislation and she has not done that and now via the NDIA um, I am homeless and um, I don't know what to do about that I, I think it's fair reasonable and necessary that I have a home and I think that um, there should be a way that the NDIA can get around, I mean, I've got what, $60,000 or something? If you forwarded me like $5,000 on a plan as a special, um, um, not excuse, a special situation that would save me from being a vagrant, I think that's reasonable and necessary. Wouldn't you agree? I cannot say anything there, Richard. I can only discuss with you what is there, what I what I am agree or not. The planner has <coughs> discussed with you on that one. If you want me to request a call back from the planner, I can do that. But it's too late. I'm homeless. I'm homeless. I'm homeless. Would you like me to assist you with your inquiry? Do you want me to send you a copy of the plan? 
I want you, the NDIS, to acknowledge that if you do not pay medium term accommodation, which is a just and ethical and reasonable and necessary way for me to keep homed and housed, and you couldn't um, put that through in a way that suits another category or comes out of another part of my plan, I think that's definitely reasonable and necessary. And um, it's evident that something is coming from the top to keep me homeless and in dire straits financially. It has happened over the last four months and you still haven't, and the NDIA still have not explained to me why the last 42 of my invoices have not been paid. Okay. Now, Richard, uh, definitely I can understand uh, your concern, but the plan manager who is uh, NDIS, a register provider, they will only pay those invoices if... I'm having trouble understanding your accent. Sorry, mate. Can you just um, speak a bit um, slower or maybe s s slower? I said your plan manager will only pay those invoices if there is enough funding allocated in your plan. Who, who is my plan manager? Is there a name of that person? No, that will be the organization name. I can give you that. Just bear with me. Well, I know that. It's plan partners. But they, they're saying that um, there is a problem with my NDIS plan. The NDIS won't approve it. Yeah. So, what happened there, as I said, Richard, if the funding is available, the plan manager is and submit those invoices to be paid. If there is no funding for the medium term accommodation, the, the, those invoices will not be submitted by the plan manager and they will not be paid. Funding need to be... I have enough funding. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. I have enough funding. I had enough funding in the last plan. They didn't pay it. I have enough funding in the new plan. Why do you condone me to homelessness instead of intervening by helping me? Alright, so now Richard, I can send in a request to the regional office. No, I, I, you are a representative and a public agent of the government. And I wish to ask you, who is a signatory to the human rights of people signed into law under the um, legislation of people with disability, that um, I require a stable home and supports and my dignity adhered to. Why as you, as a representative of the NDIS, as a government public office worker, are denying me the agency to have a home? Richard, that is not that I am denying you, what I am giving you... You are denying me. You could say, yes, certainly, sir, we could... um change this and make an exception so you have a house to stay in. You could say that, couldn't you? Richard, uh, that is not in my hand. We only, we are in the National Call Centre. We do not make a decision. We only refer to the relevant areas. We only can inform you... It's outside of the area of my expertise. Is that what you're saying? That's correct, yes. Sir. You That's are correct. an advocate of the NDIS. I have just rung up and... Already, Minister Reynolds has rejected me and the conciliator who helped me with my plan knew I was homeless and facing homelessness. She has not um, acted to help me stay in a home and she has also not acted in my AAT case at the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. She said I didn't have anything on and I explained to her very well the responsibilities that a public individual in the public service has to have in regards to human rights. Now, you are another, yet another person who has been tapped on the shoulder, paid by the government to tow the party line in order for me to be a vagrant. Well, uh, Richard, as I told you, we are in the National Call Centre. We 
I don't care where you are. You're a representative of the NDIS. Why won't you pay me my money? Okay, definitely we will pay whatever is allocated in the plan, which I am giving you the information. Can you repeat these words, please? As, as, as a representative of the NDIS, I admit that you have $60,000 of funding, but we won't pay you because we want to see you homeless. No, that uh, the $60,000 in your plan is not for your home accommodation. Well, that is, ha that is I think it's reasonable and necessary that I have a home. You're saying I can get lawns mowed and my house cleaned with it. But what in actual fact will I get cleaned and mowed if I don't have a home? Do you have any compassion, sir? Yeah, okay. So uh, that is, I can send a uh, request to the regional office for the planner to discuss that, uh, Richard, but I... What is that planner's name, please? Okay, let me give you that. It's Aaron someone, is it? No, uh, your uh, plan man, uh, planner is, uh, I think, Shane. Oh, Shane. Oh, you know what? In the whole time, the last five months, I've tried to contact that person. I've tried to email him. I've tried to call him. What is his surname, please? His name is L, listed here. Uh, Shane L. Can you please spell that? L for Lima. Only the first uh, letter of the last name is listed here. Well, how am I supposed to contact this important person by just calling your number? Yeah, I can send a request to... Um, I have requested him a thousand times and there is a movement to deny me any justice or prosperity. Can you please request that Shane call me again for the hundred thousandth time? Yeah, sure. And, and just just to interject, I have emailed the NDIS Minister Reynolds. I have explained to her that I have not been paid the last 42 invoices and that I have received medium-term accommodation support before and she won't do it again and that I'm at risk of homelessness. I have no food, medication or a place to stay. And she condones that. Yeah. She condones that. She, she said she sent me she said I was distressed and go to Lifeline. Wouldn't you be distressed if you had no home, sir? Yeah, definitely, definitely. As I said, uh, that is what I'm sending in the request for the planners to What do you think of the NDIS Minister Reynolds condoning what you're saying to me? What powers do I have to intervene? You have a power. Uh, you are the participant, so you have every right to request a call or discuss. No, you're not following what I'm saying. I've already emailed directly the minister for the whole NDIS. She condones my vagrancy. If she's the NDIS minister, yeah. who under her is going to help? Pardon me? Has, has she advised you that she is going to intervene in this matter? I will, I will email her directly today, mm -hmm. again, and I will request yeah. that um, this be paid immediately. Yeah. You've been no help today. I have already asked the NDIS and Plan Partners a thousand times for the reasons why 42 invoices haven't been paid. There is a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. You, sir, are a part of it. And I have been catastrophically destroyed over years. I wish to say, what is your name again, sir? Yeah, my name is Kulde. Can you please spell that? K-U-L-D-W-E-P. 
Okay. Do you have an identification number, please? Yeah, K for Kilo, G for Golf, R for Rogers, 785. Can you please send me the evidence that says I can't access medium term accommodation? Sir, as I said, I definitely send you uh, uh, a copy of the plan to your address, okay? So no, no, not my, my email address, please. I want it immediately. We cannot send you an email if you have, do you have a MyGov account access? I only just got back into MyGov because I'd been locked out of it. Alright, so if you have a MyGov account linked to the NDIS, we can send you an email. But if you have not, then we cannot send on your private email because of the sensitive information. I can't believe this is happening to me. You've been no help and you're following a government party line that aims to desecrate me. Congratulations, it's worked and I think it's your decision not to intervene is done with great cowardice because you don't know me or my situation, you have no compassion and you are paid by the government to further oppress me. What are you doing? I'm just requesting a call back from the planner to you, okay? And, and can you say it's urgent or I'm going to kill myself? Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Okay.